Welcome back in seventh grade. Uh, today we're going to take a look at polynomials. Um, there's a few things we want to be able to do. We want to be able to classify them um, as either monomials, binomials, or trinomials. We want to be able to state the degree of each one, and we also want to write them in descending order, which is uh, generally what we call standard form, the way that we generally want to see them. Um, so I started out here by defining some of these for you because this is your first um, foray into polynomials, so we need to figure out what those are. So a polynomial is an algebraic expression, you've talked about those before, um, that is the sum or difference of terms. All right, and I'll show you what that looks like on the next slide. Um, a monomial would be what we call each term in the polynomial. Basically, it includes numbers and variables that we're multiplying together. A binomial is simply a polynomial that has two terms in it, and a trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. Any polynomial that has more than three, we just refer to as polynomial. It doesn't have a specific designation. All right, so we're going to start out just by classifying these as monomials, binomials, or trinomials. So here, what you want to look for, remember it said it was the sum or the difference. Here I see an addition sign, so that means it's the sum. I'm adding together two different things, so that means this is a binomial. There are two terms. Terms are always um, always separated by addition or subtraction signs. It's the, the uh, sum or the difference of them. Okay, 2x. You'll notice we're multiplying those two together, so this is only one term. This is considered one term, so we would call it a monomial. k divided by 4. This is still a monomial because basically we could re rewrite this as one-fourth times k. If the, if the variable was on the bottom, it, would be, it wouldn't be a polynomial, it would be something else, okay? We can't divide by the variable. But since the variable is on top and we could write it as one-fourth times k, this again means I have one term, a monomial. Down here, again, what I always want to look for, do I have addition or subtraction signs? I have an addition sign. I have a subtraction sign. Those are separating my terms, so that means I have one, two, three terms. If it has three terms, we call it a trinomial. Okay? So it's the sum of the difference. I have an addition and a subtraction sign that's separating my monomial terms. Here, x cubed y, z to the second, that is one term. They're all being multiplied. There's no addition or subtraction signs. This is a monomial. Here I have c to the fifth minus c squared. I have one minus here in the middle, so I have two separate terms, two terms that are separating, making this a binomial. x minus 1, same way we had up here. I've got two terms separated by a subtraction sign, so this is a binomial. And here I have 856p to the fourth, no addition or subtraction sign, separating terms, so this is a monomial. Okay? Because we're just multiplying it all together, so that's fine. The difference between monomial, binomial, trinomial is just the number of terms. So you're looking for addition and subtraction signs. And the prefixes, you can remember, mono means one, bi means two, tri means three. So if it has one term, it's a monomial. If it has two terms, it's a binomial. If it has three terms, it's a trinomial. Uh, moving on, now we want to look at the degree of each. The degree of a monomial is simply the sum of the exponents of its variables. So I'm only looking at variables and the exponents attached to them. So what we want to remember here is if I have an x, and a lot of kids try to say it's zero, it's not. Remember, if there's no number in math, there's an implied one, okay? So this is x to the first, so that means this has a degree of one. There's one exponent um, on my variable. Ignore the 8. That doesn't help us at all with the degree. Here I have 341p to the fourth. Again, ignore your coefficient, the number that comes in front of it. We're just looking at the exponent. There's only one variable. It has an exponent of 4, so this has a degree of 4. x 
cubed y. Now remember, I said this is the sum of the exponents of all your variables. I have two variables here, so I need to add up the exponents here. Again, remember, there's no number listed here, which means there's an implied 1. So I need to add those two numbers together. The 3 and the 1 I'm going to add together. This has a degree of 4. Here I have a squared, b squared. So again, I'm taking the sum of the exponents. There's two different variables. I'm adding all those exponents together. 2 plus 2 is 4. This one also has a degree of 4. Here I have the number 2. This has a degree of 0 because there is no variable. That's the only time you have a degree of 0. If there's no variable, the degree is 0. If there's a variable and there's no number, that means there's a degree of 1. There's always an implied 1 there. Don't forget that. From here, um, now that we can determine the degree of the term, we can degre uh, determine the degree of the polynomial. This is simple. This is just simply the same as the uh, term, the monomial, with the highest degree. So as we go through, we're just going to look at the degrees of each of the terms. Here I have a y. So remember, there's an implied 1. That has a, a degree of 1. This doesn't have a variable, so it has a degree of 0. So what's my term with the highest degree? 1. So that means the degree of the polynomial is 1. All right, over here, I have z to the fourth. So I'm looking at the exponent. That term has a degree of 4. This term, z to the third, has a degree of 3. This term, z, there's no number, so there's an implied 1, has a term of 1, uh, a degree of 1. This term here has no variable, so it has a degree of 0. So what's the degree of the polynomial? We're looking for the degree with the highest term. Highest term is 4. The degree of the polynomial is 4. Don't try to add them together after you've gotten all the different degrees. It's just the highest degree is the degree of the polynomial. All right, here I've got a squared b. Again, remember, implied 1. So this has a term of 3. Remember, there's implied 1s here. This has a term of 2. So my polynomial has a term, uh, a degree of 3. Okay, the degree of the polynomial is the degree of the highest term. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is writing polynomials in what we call standard form. This is the traditional way that you want to see them. It's kind of um, what we'd call the proper way to write them. There's a way that you generally want them to look. And by, uh, standard form, we simply mean we're putting them in order, descending order from greatest to least, based on the exponent of the variable or the degree of the, of the term. All right, so if you look at this one, I already wrote it down, um, and this is in standard form, you'll notice. I'm just looking at the, the degree of each of this. This has a degree of 3, this has a degree of 2, this has a degree of 1, this has a degree of 0. So I've gone in descending order, starting with the largest degree or the largest exponent, and worked my way down. So what we want to do is we want to take this one and we want to put it into descending order because it's not in descending order right now. The first thing I'm going to suggest, what I like to do is box up my terms. This way we don't get confused with signs, okay? Here's one term. There's nothing written in front of it. It means it's a positive term. Here's a second term. And you'll notice there's a minus in front of it. When we rearrange these terms, that minus needs to stay with this, or that negative sign needs to stay with that term. My final term has a plus sign with it. That plus sign needs to travel with this. So don't get your signs confused. They're going to travel with the, um, with the term they're attached to. Okay. So then I'm going to go through and I'm simply going to look at what is, uh, what is the degree of each of these so that we can put them into order. So this one has a degree of 4, this has a degree of 1, this has a degree of 5. So how do I want to reorder them? Well, I want the 5 to go in the first place. I was adding it, or this was a positive sign, so I don't need to add the plus sign here. This is already an applied positive. There's nothing in front of it. Second should be my term of 4. This was positive, which means I'm just going to put the plus sign with it. And finally, the term of uh, the degree of 1 is going to go last. There was a negative sign or a minus sign in front of it, so I need to keep that in front of it when I'm rewriting it. 
It's now in descending order or what we would call standard form. So the big thing there is just to make sure that your signs travel with the proper term when you're doing it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to rewatch the video or you know where to ask them uh, if you have them. Have a good night, guys.